we will put our hands together in one chair. You expectant for the word? Yes. Okay, we will hand out to God. Hallelujah. Jesus is good. Yes. Amen. Yes. I want to thank Prim and Sue so much for this opportunity to be with you. Amen. But uh, God is good. Amen. Turn to your neighbor say, God is good. God is good. And he's only good. And to his goodness, there is no end. Hallelujah. He loves you. You may take your seat, but as you take it, look to your neighbor say, Jesus loves you. Thank you so much. Okay, so we were busy this week and we were talking about a few things. First of all, we talked about the new image that's in Christ. Hallelujah. So we talked the second night about you must know. You must realize that you have been redeemed. Amen. So we were redeemed from the old image into the image of Christ. From the image of sin to the image of righteousness. Amen. Of the image of the city of Babylon into the image of the new Jerusalem. Amen. So you were redeemed from that old sinful carnal nature into the nature of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say that's me. That's me. Hallelujah. Then yesterday we were talking about now faith. So it's not for you to have faith in this image, the perfection that God brought you, not someday, but it's meant for right now. We should live that life right now. So all the religion put something in the future and they hope that it will happen to them someday. But for us who believe in Jesus Christ, it's our reality right now. Amen. That's our reality. What they think is the end of their life is the beginning in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm blessed. Now I want to start today and I'm going to start at John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Say my circumstance cannot change God's goodness. But His goodness is changing my circumstance. Hallelujah. So he loves me. Okay, we're going to start at uh, John chapter 4 and we're going to read verse 20, 20, 20, 23. It says, And a time will come, however, it is already here. You see the now time? So it's not that they, a time is going to come and it's going to be in that time. It comes says, and says, the time will come and is already here. Amen. So it's not futuristic for us who believe. When the true genuine worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking just such people as these, as worshippers. Say hallelujah. Spirit and in truth. If we stand in the old image, we are blinded. Blinded to what? The truth. Who is the truth? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen? And His main purpose was to get you to the Father. To reconcile you with your Father. Amen? To bring you in a position where He lives in you and you live in Him. Where there is no more God separated, but you can stand in His presence Worshipping in spirit and in truth. Nothing that we need to feel guilty about. Nothing that needs to distract you. But you can stand and you just can say, My Father, I love you. I love you. I love you. Amen. Verse 24. God is spirit. Say, My Father is spirit. And those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. So there's no other way to worship God. Amen. There's no other way to worship God than to enter through Jesus Christ and stand in the presence of God and really worship Him by truth. What is the truth? Why do we worship? What is worship all about? Fellowship. Amen. Communion with God. Amen. Intimacy with God. And it also goes about giving Him praise. 
So if we know the truth of what he prepared for us, the image that he put us in, we can truly worship because of the truth. Because who the Son sets free is free indeed. So the truth will set you free. Amen. That is the Son. So if we have him and the knowledge about him and we are continually molded in the knowledge into that image, we can truly worship from a place because he's good. Because we realize who we are and we know who he is. Amen. So it's a whole cycle of things. But if we are not knowing really who we are and we think we are still on this side, you can't worship him in truth because you are still believing a lie. So you need to be freed from the lie so that you can see the true image which he has prepared for you so that you can out of that be thankful and you can praise him for who he is. Okay? You know that a lot of believers think that Jesus did a thing half job and he's coming back to finish off what he started. His last words on the cross was not to be continued. Amen? It was not to be continued. It was, it is Finish. Tatelestai. It is done. It's complete. Amen. So we must realize the finished work of the cross. He came, you, he came and took you out of the position of darkness and he placed you into the position of light. So that we can live a life that is full of light. Like we said yesterday, in light there can't be darkness. So if you are in the light, you are in the truth. So out of you comes the truth. So you can now truly have True relationship with God. Unbroken fellowship because you know the truth. Amen. So we must constantly wash our minds with the word. So that we know what's the truth and what God says about us. Because if we don't know what God says about us, we start to confess the position that we believe we are in. Amen. But we constantly must renew the mind. We are not anymore in that condition where we were separated from God, but we are reconciled. As he is, so are we. So where he is, there we are. Amen. So if he is seated in heaven, you are seated in heaven. Amen. Like I said, the book of Acts constantly preach this. Jesus died, he rose, and he was seated at the right hand of God. And now we come and we preach the same message to the believers. Because Jesus was the forerunner, the pioneer of our faith. So what he did, he actually put as an example what you, go, what you reco- uh, unify yourself with, with his work, uh, works, so that you can realize your position now. So as he has died, count yourself also dead. As he has risen, you count yourself risen to a new life. That's in Christ. As he is seated, so you are seated in the heavenly sphere. Hallelujah. So I'm in a place of authority. Where I can rule and reign. As a king. In this life. On this earth. Hallelujah. So now if you know the truth, then it's so much easier just to praise your God. Father, say, Lord, you are good. You are good. Because now you start to know what you talk about. Hallelujah. But it's difficult to praise somebody if you don't know what you talk about. So we must get to the truth. And the truth reveals always who you are. It doesn't reveal the sin. Amen. You know, there's a lot of people that focus on the sin. And they come and say, oh, brother, you know, the word of God comes and says in Ephesians that the Holy Spirit is there to convict us and convince us of unrighteousness. And now then the church starts and they... Give a word of who is doing what wrong and where is the problem. And Have you heard stuff like that? God says he will remember your sin no more. So why would he come and remind in front of a lot of people the thing that he says he will forget? Amen. Are you with me? So we must constantly work on this box saying I am not in that condition. This is my point. This is the truth. Amen. I am. In his image. I am in the position of blessing. I am in the position where I am free of sin. Amen. I am in the position of righteousness. Meaning God sees me perfect in every way. Amen. Right standing with him. Hallelujah. Say God is good. Only good. Go with me to Ephesians 6. So. While we go there, you know the whole thing about 
the Holy Spirit convicting people. If you read the verse, it says it convicts the world of sin and unrighteousness. And it comes and see even, say even why. Because they do not believe. Are you a believer? Then don't be judged. Don't be condemned. It's not for you. The righteous will never come up for judgment, according to the book of John. Amen? Let's go quickly to Ephesians chapter 6. It says, put on God's whole armor. Okay, now I don't know about you, but I heard a lot of sermons about this. Amen? My grandmother, yo, she was a busy one. She took this up and every morning she stand up like 4 o'clock in the morning. And the first thing she do. She stands in front of the bed and then she says, I put on the helmet of salvation. I put on the breastplate of righteousness. And, she's the, and it amazes me when I was young. Okay? Because when she came to visit us, she normally stays like two months. And then she goes to the next children and stay with them. And so she traveled between all the children. But when she was with us, I was amazed by this. Because normally sometimes we share a room and grandma will stand up and I watch. She put it on every morning at night. She never takes it off. She just goes to sleep. <laughs> but tomorrow morning, and I was wondering, God, if this is so important, because the way that we were raised, if you don't do it, the devil, devil will find an open space because you're not protected. So he will come for you. Okay? So I was wondering, Lord Jesus, what is the time when this thing is disappearing? Because if I was the devil... I will stand and wait next to the bed until this thing is now. You understand? Because in the morning she put it on. I never see her take it off, but it disappeared. Because every morning she has to put it on again. It was like, yo, I don't understand this thing, but it can be dangerous. <laughs> Amen. But what we must realize, let's, let's read first. Uh, verse 11. Put on the whole armor. The armor of heaven, of a heavy uh, armed soldier, which God supplies, that you may be able to successfully to stand up against all the strategies, uh, the seeds of the devil. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood. Okay, let me pause there. So, what I realize, putting on the armor is actually putting on Christ. So it's not something that you repeatedly do. It's something that you remind yourself of that you have done. Amen. My old nature was without God. My new one is in Christ. So Christ is my salvation. He is my righteousness. He is my truth. And so we can go on with it. It all represents one thing, Christ Jesus. And it says, clothe yourself with Christ in so many other places. Amen. So we have now the image of Him. So that's what the whole armor talks about. It's been clothed with Christ Jesus. Amen. To realize what a blessing. What a blessing to be in Him. Amen. So He says, as we are clothed with it, we must realize one thing. Our wrestling is not against flesh and blood. What is the most thing that churches struggle with? Okay, look at this. <laughs> my spirit wants, but my flesh. <laughs> it's so weak, Lord. Are you with me? So they wrestle is the whole time against the flesh. Do you realize that you were freed from the useless flesh? Amen. Count yourself dead. What died? When we talk about baptism, what died? The flesh. Amen. We buried that old carnal nature, the flesh. And we are raised in Christ Jesus into a new life. So what he is... We become. What is our Father? Spirit. So He wants people that worship Him in spirit and in truth. So to be in truth, you must be in the spirit. So how does He get you in the spirit? By dying of the carnal nature, the flesh of Adam. And you are raised in a life in Christ. Okay? Now the Bible also, uh, before I go ahead, let's read it rather. Okay. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Hallelujah. Are you happy? Yes. Say, Jesus is with me. And he will never leave me or forsake me. Amen. Because he loves me. He loves me. 
Amen. You believe it? Yes. He loves you. Ephesians 5 verse 31 comes and says, For this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother, and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Now look to your neighbor say one flesh. One flesh. Okay. So this is not something, I don't know if I've said it, but previously, you know, I was quite surprised at my, no, I'm teasing, okay, but that's how I think normally, I like to make fun of stuff, okay. The day that we've got married, the pastor took this verse and it was part of the sermon and it says the two shall become one flesh. So I said, yes, only one of us is going to eat. <laughs> Less money for groceries, Amen. Less money to buy food to her because it's only for one now. <laughs> and then a few years later, we suddenly became three. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> the two shall become one flesh <laughs> and we end up to be four now. Okay, but <laughs> <laughs> look to your neighbors, say we can love. The word says, he that's seated in heaven is laughing. So are you seated in heaven? So you may laugh. Amen. The joy, the joy of the Lord is with us. Amen. Then it goes on. The two shall become one flesh. Verse 32. And then it says, this is a mystery, very great. But I speak concerning the relation of Christ and the church. Christ and the church. What shall happen? The two shall become one flesh. Now the problem with the church is why they sit in a situation where they feel so unworthy. Because they feel that Christ come and become part of their flesh. And their flesh is not good enough. Are you with me? They think that Christ came. And he becomes one with their flesh. No, it's actually the other way around. Amen. Your flesh dies. The Adamic nature, the fleshly, sinful, the body that is an instrument of sin dies. You are raised in a new body. His flesh, his blood. His bone of his bone. Amen. His image. And we even call ourselves the body. Of Christ so we become one with his flesh so that you're not minded of the old previous thing thinking that you are not good enough that thing died with all itself and the relationship with sin was broken according to Romans chapter 6 it says as Christ has died to sin count yourself now also dead to sin but a life to Christ hallelujah so I'm dead to sin, but alive in Christ. I am His body. I am everything that He represents. Hallelujah. So the problem about the wrestle against flesh and blood is not your portion. It's the year that people struggle with it. Amen. So you must realize that carnal nature died. It's no longer an issue with God. It's not what is preventing you from worshipping Him in spirit and truth. It's your thoughts that's preventing you. Because He done everything on His side to take you out of it. You must renew your mind to the state that He placed you in. The position that He gave you so that you can stand. <sighs> Just knowing He's good. It's not your goodness that brought you here. It was nothing that you have done. It was only your faith in what He has done. That place to this side. So if you have nothing to do with it. To get you on this side. How on this earth. Can you do something. To get you out of this position. Are you with me? Yes. But we quickly so think that God is rejecting us. Because of things that we do. He paid the price. And finished that thing. Where it was all about you. Now it is all about him. And what he has done. And it's not connected to what we have done, but to what He has done. Amen? Say, God is good. I'm one with Him. He lives in me. And I live in Him. Go with me to the book of Colossians, chapter 1. 
Colossians 1 verse 21, it says, And although you at one time were estranged and alienated, so were alienated, so talk about the was, it's not talking about the now. So don't get hooked on what was. Get hooked on what is. Amen? You once were alienated. So stop thinking that you're alien. Amen? You're not an alien to God. Let's go on. You were once estranged and alienated from Him and were of hostile attitude of mind in your wicked activities. You were. You once were, but don't get hooked there. That's where a lot of people spend their time on what were. And they never get over it, so they don't have boldness to worship Him in spirit and truth. Because they see flesh. Because they are still hooked on what they was, what died. Amen? Don't cry for Argentina. Okay, move on. Verse 22. Yet now. Say now. now. It's now. Yet now has Christ the Messiah reconciled you to God in the body of His flesh. Oh, Jesus. You are reconciled to the body of His flesh. Not your flesh. He was not reconciled to your flesh. Your flesh died. You are reconciled to His flesh. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. That's awesome. To the body of His flesh through death. In order to present you holy, listen to this, and faultless and irreproachable in the Father's presence. You are what? Faultless. Say, I'm faultless. <laughs> in the Father's presence. You see, now you can worship Him with truth. Because you're not sitting in your mind and you feel, ooh, <laughs> like Adam, <laughs> trying to hide yourself. And you put up a hand, like it looks like you're busy, but please God, look to, look to that one. <laughs> Don't look too deep and to see too much. <laughs> Are you with me? But the truth is, Jesus made you faultless in front of the Father. So that you can stand anytime, anywhere, perfect. In his sight. Worshipping in spirit and truth. Oh, Gerard, that's a hypocrite. You know, he's done something, but then he comes and stands as if he has done nothing. We must talk about the reality. This is my reality. Amen? That old condition does not exist where I was separated and my works was what was pleasing God. Now I am reconciled to him. His work and my faith in His work is what's pleasing unto Him. Amen. So I'm standing faultless, blameless in His sight. So that you can worship Him and really worship Him without any regret or any thought that comes and beguilt your heart. Amen. We read that God's love is greater than your guilt. Amen. So rather trust in what He has done. Than trying to be better and ever found yourself not to be perfect. You are perfect. Look through his eyes. Amen. He loves you. He loves you. Galatians chapter 5. We're going to start to read from verse 24. Galatians 5 verse 24. It says, And those who belong to Christ Jesus, the Messiah, have crucified the flesh. What does it mean? The flesh died. Amen? It's dead. The godless human nature. The beast. <laughs> if we put it that way. With its passions and appetites and desires. If we live by the Holy Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. It's by the Holy Spirit we have our life in God. Let us go forward walking in line, accordance, controlled by the Spirit. So what does it mean with the attitude? You once had the attitude that was hostile unto God. But now our attitude changed as we change our minds. 
We are not hostile and think, oh, I haven't done this and I haven't done that. No, I just think, thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you have done, Lord. Thank you for what you have done. Now I can truly thank him for what he has done. And not try to thank him for what I must still do. Thank him for what he has done. Amen. Say thank you, Jesus. Go with me to Galatians chapter 3. Let's start at verse 1. It says, Oh, you poor and silly and thoughtless, unreflecti unreflecting and senseless Galatians, who has fascinated or bewitched you or cast a spell over you, unto whom right before your very eyes Jesus Christ the Messiah was openly and graphically portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit as the result of obeying the law and doing its works? Or was it by hearing the message of the gospel and believing it? Was it from observing a law or ritual or from a message of faith? Amen. So how do we get all of this? By faith. Not by works. Not by things we can do or try so hard. It's by what he has done. Amen. Are you so foolish and so senseless and so silly? Having begun your new life spiritually with the Holy Spirit, are you now reaching perfection by depending on the flesh? So, did you reach perfection because you are born from the Spirit? Or you try to reach perfection by letting the flesh die? And it's a struggle to let him die. Or do you count yourself dead now? But alive to him. Amen? That's what most of us, most people try to do. They think this flesh is now in a rehab. It must be. We try to get this stuff. and ooh, ooh. No, he died. Much easier. Because if he was rehabbed, he can always fall back. Okay? If he died, there's no way to fall back. We don't bring zombies back. Amen? <laughs> Jesus died. And we are crucified with him. So count yourself now also dead to sin, but alive to Christ. Hallelujah. Your flesh, the Adam nature died. Your flesh is now his flesh. The life you now live is for his glory. Amen. In him I live, I move, and have my being. Amen. I am his body. I'm full and flooded with Jesus. Hallelujah. Go with me to Romans chapter 7. It says, verse 5. When we were living in the flesh, when we were, not still, you're living now in his flesh, but here it refers to the old Adam nature, the old flesh. When we were living in the flesh, the sinful passions that were awakened and aroused by what the law makes sin, we countlessly operate in our natural powers, in our bodily organs and sensitive appetites and wills of the flesh, so that we born fruit for death. Okay? Then he goes on. Verse 7. But now. Say thank you, Lord Jesus, for now. So don't stay in what was. Get into the now. We are discharged from the law and have terminated all intercourse with it. Having died to what once restrained and held us captive. So that's what was holding you captive. You die in captivity there. So what are they guarding? A dead person. <laughs> so don't you guard the dead person and keep him constantly with you. He died. Leave him behind. Okay, wait, my phone jumped. But now we are discharged from the law and having terminated all intercourse with it, having died to what once restrained and held as captive. So now we serve not under obedience to the old code, the written, uh, the written regulation, but under obedience to the prompting of the spirit in newness of life. The obedience. Amen. Now that's also a very misconcept that people have about obedience. 
Okay? A lot of people think obedience is like <laughs> God says, do, do. You know what the word obedience means? If we go and read about it, it says aligning yourself with what you hear as truth. Okay? So that's obedience. So, for example, if God says you are dead to sin, okay, obedience will be that when I find myself in a situation and I try to think like, oh, yo, yo, I'm not worthy. I'm not holy because of what I have done. Obedience will be to align myself with what God said. And that is, you are righteous. That's obedience. Okay? Are you with me? What is correction? It goes together. Correction is not that God comes and he hits you with a stick and says, I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you. But you couldn't listen. Put up your hands. I have a stick. I'm going to hit every finger five times. Okay? So you can learn your lesson. Okay? That's not it. Biblical correction is, you know, when God tells you, you are not that, but you are righteous. You are no sinner. You are righteous. He corrects you from your faults that you think you are still in the old. He corrects you and says, hey, 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 look this side. This is it. This is it. Keep your eyes here. Keep it here. Amen. Keep it just here. So, you know, I've got this thing in, that I, I, I normally talk in my church about uh, the puppy syndrome. Okay? Now, puppy syndrome means, I don't know, we like to have pets in our houses everywhere, and I know the same here, but the biggest problem that we have is when you get a puppy, is to get him trained. Because he likes to go and do his business on your carpets, <laughs> on the things that you don't want him to do his business on. So the biggest problem is to train that puppy not to do it. How do we train a puppy? Okay, I've got a puppy, it's now four months old, a new dog. <laughs> you take his nose when he's done his business. You take his nose, you put it in the business, and you take a newspaper and you give him a hiding from the back. Okay? And you know what? The church got hooked on the same thing. If somebody do something wrong, everybody must look. Look what brother Samuel has done. <gasps> and then we hit him. <laughs> Amen? Oh, the word says we must correct each other. That's not correction. We must get rid of that attitude. Correction is this. Brother, <laughs> don't sit in there and moan and groan. Okay? Come, let me show you Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He started it, he will finish it. He paid the price so that you don't need to pay the price. He's the one that makes you righteous in God's sight, not your works. That's correction. Turning his eyes from the problem to the answer that's Jesus Christ and the finished work of the cross. Amen? That's what biblical correction is all about. Amen? So we must constantly renew our minds. Renew our minds. The old carnal nature has died. The old person is dead. But I am alive in Christ Jesus. The old image was broken down. Nothing left. It died. It doesn't still there and I can go and visit it. It's dead. It's buried. It's gone. I am now only a new creation in Christ Jesus. I am in the kingdom of light. The kingdom of light doesn't go back to the kingdom of darkness to try to go and visit it. It can't because it will turn it into light. Okay? <laughs> because when light goes darkness, please. Amen? That's what the word of God says. Now I want to read quickly a passage here out of Isaiah. You can go with me to Isaiah 61. Now Jesus came out of the desert when he was tempted and he walked into the temple and they handed him the scroll and he was reaching, uh, reading the first few verses of this. But I want you just to focus on what it actually comes and says. What he has done for us. Amen. It comes and says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed 
and qualified me to preach the gospel of good tidings to the meek, to the poor and the afflicted. He has sent me to, uh, to bind up and heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty, okay, captives and opening this prison and the eyes to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of his favor and the day of his vengeance. Now, when was the day of God's vengeance? On the cross. So Jesus was actually proclaiming to them, it's going to be fulfilled. Here I am. I'm going to do it. Then he goes on, verse uh, 3. To grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them an ornament of beauty instead of ashes. The oil of joy instead of of mourning. So don't sit and mourn. We are supposed to be joyful. But Gerard, when I look to myself, I just want to cry because how how on earth? God is so good and me, I'm not so good. No, 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 no. With what are you busy with? Renew your mind. Okay? Be joyful in the Lord because it's all about Him. Rejoice, not in yourself, because you are good. Amen. <laughs> Rejoice in the Lord, for He is good. Amen. The garment of praise instead of heavy burden. A garment of praise. Who's going to worship the Father? He wants true worship. That worship you mean spirit and in truth. So you can only do it if you know your position. Amen. Realize he took the sadness and he gave me gladness. He took my mourning and he gave me joy. Amen? So that's why the Bible says, rejoice in the Lord always. I say again, rejoice. Not rejoice in you, that's so good. He's so good. Amen? Okay, of praise instead of heavy burdened. And uh, failing spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness. What are you? An oak of righteousness. What's the kingdom of God? righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit that's who you are amen so that's me, that's me. oak of righteousness oak of righteousness lofty strong and magnificent uh, for uprightness justice and right standing with god the planting of the lord that he may be glorified not that you may be glorified in what you have accomplished it's all about Him. That's how you worship Him in truth, realizing it's only Him. It's not you. Amen? Verse 5. Aliens. Oh my God. Where? <laughs> right here in the Bible. Aliens shall stand ready. Okay? Now, if He talks about aliens, we know people that are alienated. Okay? Shall stand ready and feed your flocks. Oh, and foreigners shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers, but you shall be called the priest of the Lord. People will speak of you as the ministers of our God. You shall eat the wealth of the nations, and the glory ones that of your captors shall be yours. Instead of your former shame, you shall have. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Instead of this honor and reproach, your people shall rejoice in the possession, in their possession, uh, portion. Therefore, in the land they shall possess double. What shall you possess? Double. Say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Whatever they had... Uh, Forfeited. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. What? Everlasting joy. Everlasting joy. So what do we have? Everlasting joy. But if you look to your old nature and you think you are still there, you're not having any joy. Everlasting joy is to know you are in Him. And it's done. Amen? Everlasting joy. Verse 9. And the offspring shall be known among the nations and the descendants among the people. All who see them in their purity. 
will recognize and acknowledge that they are the people whom the Lord has blessed. Now, it's talking about you. People are going to look at you and they're going to say, whoa, that's the people God has blessed. Amen. Say, this is me that he talks about. Amen. Do you realize we are prophesying right now to you? Amen. This is a prophecy about you. Zion. Amen. Verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul will exult in my God for he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bride groom uh, digs himself with uh, garland and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. Oh, you are so beautiful. Amen. For as surely as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as the garden caused what is sown in it to spring forth, so surely the Lord will, God will cause righteousness and justice and praise to spring forth before all the nations through the self-fulfilling power of His Word. So self-fulfilling power of His Word. So what must you do? Stick with His Word. And what will happen? It will come to pass. You will see it. You're going to experience it. You're going to know He's good. Amen. Amen? So it's got nothing to do with me. But everything to do with Him. And His goodness for me. Hallelujah. God is good. Only good. I think let's quickly, we're going to stand. Say, I've done with the old. I am in the new. So I'm not going to occupy my mind with the old. I'm going to constantly renew my mind that it's finished. It is done. I am in Christ Jesus. And His Word sets me free. So that I can praise Him in truth. Amen. And in spirit. Hallelujah. True worshiper. That's who I am. Amen. I'm not trying to be a worshiper. I am a worshiper. Amen. It's not depending on me. My focus is on what He has done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord, that it's not depending on our accomplishments, <laughs> but on what you have done. You have done for us, Lord. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. For it's only you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you freed us from the useful, useless, fruitless way of life that was all about ourselves. And you gave us the very life of Christ so that we can be in harmony, that we can be with peace with you, that we can enjoy the blessing of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you became a curse so that I can be blessed. Thank you, Lord, that you take death on you so that I can have life and enjoy it to the full. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, that I can stand firm on the finished work of the cross. We give you all glory, Lord Jesus, all praise. <laughs>